This is Jeremiah. Welcome. Let's get into this right away. This is Romans chapter 1. Now, I've gone through Romans chapter 1 quite a few times in this ministry because it is one of the cornerstone chapters or books of your Bible, as many of you know, where we have justified by faith and Abraham was justified, there's therefore now no condemnation. All those wonderful scriptures that are pretty popular here in Western Civ, here in the Protestant realm. And I'm very happy to get into these uh, texts here. We're, we're going to spend a lot of time on Romans chapter 1. As a matter of fact, we're going to spend a lot of time. Let's get into it right now. Let, let's, let's listen to the first half of Romans chapter 1. And uh, relax as we get into some Bible study here. Where are we? The epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Romans, chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was left hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the so that's as far as we're going to go. Um, now, I'm going to I'm going to use Romans chapter one as a vehicle to really make some foundations here as to general Christianity for you today. I'm very happy with uh, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant. We greet you in the only name given amongst men. And we lift up our hands unto our King and our God, Jesus Christ. So let's get going as we rejoice in the Lord and anticipate the rapture. We just gave another lesson on the rapture here. It's, um, and we're very happy that uh, people are viewing the rapture and so forth. And, and that uh, it's, it's a big issue right now because it is, it is the big issue at this, at this time for the Christian individual to be one, uh, one of the five of the ten who are going to get poofed. Uh, five are going to get left here. And the, and the obvious goal here is to seek to uh, be pleasing to the Lord so that you might uh, be in the rapture. So it's quite obvious that if, if you're left here, the, the, the general reason for you being left here is you just weren't on the ball. I mean, as we say here in America. So uh, there's got to be a reason for you being left here. If you're the five, correct? So what what other conclusion is there? Now we can go to those scriptures not later on, but not, not right now. Love active duty members. So that, that's the banquet. That's um, the references in the prophecies. Matthew 24 and Luke, etc. Towards the pre-tribulation or tribulation period. Jacob's trouble, etc. Let's get going because you don't want to be in Jacob's trouble. The reason why Jacob is in trouble is why. Why is Jacob in trouble? Because Jacob didn't take the gospel. 
and the five who took the gospel who were left here didn't take it seriously. The, a chicken can figure that out. That's, a, I mean, the five, I'm not laughing about them being left, I'm just saying that it's not that hard to figure out that there the, are the 10 converts, so to speak, and, and five are left here. So, okay, the five that are left here, common sense will tell you that they're not on the ball, okay? And, we, and I'm not gonna go to those scriptures right now, but I wanted to mention that. Uh, which I didn't, I didn't emphasize in the last rapture lesson. Remember, the rapture has, has a thousand subjects or a thousand, a thousand points. I go over most of the main ones that I think are pretty much uh, uh, primary uh, scriptures and ideas for your Thessalonian references and so forth. Jeremiah, what's going on with Romans? Turn to Romans chapter 1. Now, I'm going to go over some terminology I'm not going to necessarily address what Paul did uh, specifically in Germain. Uh, I've done that on, this is like my third, I think this is my third Romans chapter one lesson. So I'm bouncing around on different subjects. Uh, the previous uh, lesson, we talked about the second half of the chapter, which are the bad boys. Okay, those are the people who aren't paying attention. Okay, we're gonna let, we're gonna let that whole half of, half of the chapter go. And as a matter of fact, I'm going, I'm just about done with the review on the entire book. So I'm very happy with that. At this point, it's looking pretty good. I just got started on a review over, over uh, so uh, Solomon's Proverbs. Uh, that just got started. So that'll be done by holiday time that, uh, uh, in the United States here in 2023. If, if, we, can, if we can have a holiday. <laughs> Who knows? The Lord knows. I mean, it's, it's getting weird here in the USA. It's, this place is nothing like it used to be. The old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Uh, the times they be a change. And now, now let, let, let's get to the Romans, Romans here, chapter one. Now, what I want to do is go through some vocabulary and leave it at that because it's very, it's very important to spend a lot of time on vocabulary. Now, as, as I mentioned, as this ministry continues, we're going to start listening to more scriptures. I have uh, Rome. Um, Psalms chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, that we can listen to here coming up, or just 4 by itself. Chapters 3 and 4 go together very well in the book of uh, Psalms. So uh, we can do some good teachings from 3 and 4. I've already taught on 3 and 4 before, and I'm doing it again because it is cornerstone to Christianity. Christianity has a big tie with Mr. David, big time. We're talking huge. As a matter of fact, I would say that Psalms and Isaiah are two of the most important. They're just ginormous. You, you, I mean, you just have to have Psalms as part of your lesson, no matter what kind of Protestant Bible teacher you are. You, you can skip some other books of the Bible, you know, but you just do not. You cannot skip Psalms. It's just, it's germane to, to everything. So let's get going as I get into Romans now. I'm just going to go through a little bit of vocabulary and so forth as we learn more vocabulary here and tie a little bit of it or tie it into rather the, the context, okay? That's it. And it shouldn't take very long to go through that half. Now, believe it or not, I have a lot of words written down here because uh, we're really into a lot of vocabulary work. Now, and, and, I, and I, I anticipate more listening to the scriptures as we move along. I really want more of that, but I just can't seem to get uh, enough vocabulary and enough groundwork. Okay? So, and groundwork has a lot to do with vocabulary. And learning all the simple subjects in the Bible first before you go anywhere else. I play the, I play the piano, but I don't play Miles Davis, the mozart -y stuff. I, I, I'm a simple piano player, basically. Now, I can play a little bit of that stuff, but, but it, for the most part, I don't really have a brain for all that complex stuff. You know, I just don't. I mean, I'm, I'm a CB student who works hard. That's, that's the kind of brain I guess I have. I don't know. That, that might be a, a, a correct assessment. But the bottom line is I know that when you work hard, you get results. Now, I don't mean work too hard. I just mean work hard. I used to do some teaching, and I, I, I always backed off a little bit periodically, and, and I thought that some of the school district's work was just too much. 
too much math maybe a lot of that math students will never use and a lot of things that were going on that were kind of you know but the bottom line is is that you're we're here to get along and we're here to be Daniel in Babylon so you know even going into the lion's den you know whatever we got to do we're gonna do Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were thrown into a big fire so the thing is is that whatever we got to deal with we got to deal with because this is basically Babylon uh, America's more Babylon than it's ever been obviously where I live in the north here before the southerners moved up here uh, th this place was pretty close to utopia uh, with this William Penn love everybody brother stuff that's why it's God bless America because of people like Penn and the pilgrims the people down south they're irrelevant in many ways to, to to the American dream, Americanism, they're, they're not really a part of the, the, the Declaration of Independence. Now, unfortunately, they, they made uh, 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 one, one free state for every slave state kind of thing, which was really ridiculous for the Congress and so forth. But uh, other, than, other than these things, you know, we're very happy with the way things kind of ended up, to put it, put it bluntly. Um, you know, in the, in the early 1900s and so forth, uh, looking past the wars and, uh, and so forth, uh, 1930s and then after World War II, leaving out the Korean conflict and the Vietnamese conflict, uh, America did have a lot of dreamy circumstances. And I lived in part of that. And, but anyway, let's get to the lesson, Germaine. Let's go to Romans. We just listened to the gentleman... Uh, give us a little bit of Romans. Now, now I want to go through, through some vocabulary on Romans. And as, as the ministry develops, we will go through every subject that's basically in the New Covenant and, and, and the basic uh, scriptures that pertain to the New Covenant. And that, of course, is based upon the red letters of the King James Bible because everything comes from the King James Red Letter Edition. The red letters are where we focus. That's the big focus here. Uh, I just went through Matthew. We're just about done with the whole book of Matthew, focusing on red letters. Now, Paul is obviously a, a, a second or equipotential teacher, so it's okay to listen to Paul uh, as a high priority because he's basically the number two guy here. I mean, you know, he's basically the number two gentleman in your Bible. There's pretty much no question about it. I mean, uh, so... And we, we might say your number one um, man is the boss, of course. And what Paul does is he just rewrites the commandments. You know, that's all he does. Essentially. And I'll point that out to you as we move along. I die daily. Okay, what does that mean, I die daily? Paul said, I die daily. What is that in reference to, to the master's words? Well, it's a paraphrase, isn't it? Sure is. He who hates his life will keep it. Okay, I die daily. What's the difference? There is no difference, essentially. Paul gives a lot of living bread, you might call it, and uh, pertaining to uh, germane living bread, with pertaining to humil humiliation. But I, I put down living bread here, that's basically humiliation and the commandments of Jesus Christ. Uh, most of the commandments of Jesus Christ refer to clearly humiliation. Self-humiliation. And a fourth to eighth grader who's paying attention will acknowledge that. A lot of adults I talk to, they don't, they don't know what I just said. In the church. The living bread is basically centered upon Denial of scriptures. End of story. The master said, take up your cross six times. Did he say anything else six times? Oh, uh, maybe, but six times is a lot. That's, but <laughs> then when you meet somebody and they say, I, I don't agree with taking up your cross, but that's my master. Well, wait a minute. Okay. The thing he emphasized the most, you ignore 
and then you tell me that you're a follower? It's, it's like it's like saying you're an electrician and all you do is create wire fires everywhere you go. I mean, you 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 you're not backing up what you what you said you are. You know, simple grammar. Now I'm not, I'm not going to get into that again, but it's just sad. It's, it is. It's really. Uh, it's it's lamentable, I guess is the word, that so many people I've run into, you know, in my life, and it seems like it's gotten worse, I don't know. I haven't quantified it. I've taken a survey, but people, you walk up to them and, and you hang out with them for a while, and you go, yeah, uh, um, I, die, I die daily. And they go, what did you say? And I say, I die daily. Paul said, I die daily. And they say, I don't like that. What, what are you talking about? I said, that's the Bible. And they say, that's not the Bible. The Bible is, me to get all the candy I want or something is that's why this is called a falling away obviously you're falling away from the rudiments of what you're supposed to be paying attention to let's get to the text here Jeremiah you're on fire you're taking care of business and whose business is it it's father's business it's not my business now, it's my business now because I agree and, and I want to please Father, so it's my business too. Obviously, I'm, I'm not the progenitor of all of this, so let, let's get going. Jeremiah, Romans is where we are, chapter 1. Let, let's look at some terms here. Now, the first term is servant. Servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, which means he's master and he's Lord. Jesus said, you call me master and Lord, and that's who I am. So that, that's obviously his main title. Uh, you, you got an A for the day. What did the angel call himself in the book of Revelation to John? What did he call himself? Fellow servant. Jeremiah, you said servant's probably the most important word in the Bible. Duh. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's hard to say it isn't. It doesn't mean it's necessarily the most important. It means that it's up there. It's, it's quite obvious. When you look at the commandments of Jesus Christ, take up your cross, fall on the stone, be buried, uh, hate your life. Take up your cross six times. Put on the yoke of slavery. Put my yoke upon you. Can you come away with anything else except for a servant mind if you've read that? If you're getting a C in the class, I'm not talking about flunking students. Now, I know there's a million flunking students maybe out there. I don't know how many, but I've met quite a few at the gym and elsewhere, and else, where I go um, elsewhere. It's easy to find out who's playing games. All you got to do is mention commandments. I don't like commandments. Oh, well, okay. That just so happens to be what you need. No, I need a blessing and I need more good candy. No, that's not what you need. You're going to die eating candy. I have scriptures here that tell me that I'm going to be blessed uh, out of my socks. And that's what blessed means. I said, no, that's not what blessed means. That's called wrong answer. Blessed means in the new covenant, under Jesus Christ, the, 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 the testator, the one who, 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 who wrote a will and testament to you, that for you to fulfill the obligation to be an heir, you, you're going to have to pay attention to the command. End of story. Trying to dance around them. What did, what did, what did uh, Psalm 50 say? Hiding words behind your back and all this. I, I see it going on. People, people look at me like, like I'm, I'm Bozo or something. Okay, it ain't going to work. It's not, it's, it ain't going to happen. You can easily find out if you're clowning around. Come down, clown. You know, we can tell. Just because it's popular, you think you can get away with it or something. I don't know. what. We say take up your cross. The master said six times. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what he says. Okay? Furthermore, I want to be a winner anyway. I don't want to be a loser. Some people, I guess, they want to be losers because you're going to lose this whole battle if you don't eat the bread which came down from heaven. You walked out of the grocery store with an empty bag. Okay, that's not good. You're going to die. You need vitamins. You need soul food. That's what you need. 
sole vaccination since America's in the vaccinations here recently. So what's servant mean? It means that you have a master and you're not the master. That's what it means. That's what it means, put it bluntly. And uh, you're called to this office of a servant and an apostle. You're Paul the apostle. Now the Romans are called to be servants and they're not called to be apostles. They haven't run into Jesus Christ personally. So, but the point is that uh, master is the key word. Paul is right on track here. He's verifying servanthood by speaking servanthood. When I talk to people, they say, I, I don't want a servant mind. I used to fellowship a Bible teacher there a little bit in California. It was, it was very uncomfortable fellowshipping him. He's a very nice guy. He used to have a radio broadcast in California. And I don't know anything about it. He said that was years ago. But the point is, is that, I, you know, it was uncomfortable because that, that gentleman who was an elderly gentleman uh, like me, he, had, uh, he was very well learned in scriptures. He kept, he kept kicking, uh, a, you know, the, the living bread off the table. And, and you, you get uncomfortable because you know that that's what you need. You know, if you tell me that you're enjoying food from God, that doesn't separate you from the Disneyland crowd. That's the point. You're going to die on Disney scriptural stuff. It doesn't mean that we don't enjoy talking about food and shelter and rejoicing in the Lord. It's just that, you, that there's no line of demarcation between you and, and, and the guy down the street who's not a Christian. He thanks God for his dinner, and he talks about how he really... Thanks God for food. That's wonderful, but that, that's not salvation. So these guys come on TV and they get 40,000 people coming three times a day because they keep talking about how they can just relax and they can take it easy. And Let's get away from the apostles. See, I'm getting back into it. I don't want to get into it. Let's get in, but it, it, it ties in with the word uh, servant because, because some people want to, as the master said, they want to be above the master. See, that's the key. They want to be above the master. The master said that some people are going to try to be above him, which means that they're going to try to kick all of the servitude and all of this submission and all of this denial and sacrifice to the curb and think, and think they're going to get away with it. And, and Paul is obviously someone, just like we looked at David here, I just gave a lesson on, on Psalm number 4, and he, all, all he talks about is being subservient. This gentleman, Paul, is in charge of churches. He's the boss. But all he talks about is being in submission and, and humble and, and caring. That's all he talks about all the time. That's all David talks about all the time. He's a king. Lord, please help me. Lord, you're in charge. I, I, I'm unworthy. That's all he talks about over and over again. And yet he's a king. So he successfully abdicated, just like Paul is telling you right now, a servant, a bond slave of Jesus Christ. He says it and he means it. So this is extremely significant. Let's move on. So the leader has a role of what? Selecting uh, the purpose, purposes of God, just as everyone else does. And he has decided to go along with the program of the master who knocked them off of a donkey or some wild animal there, the, 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 uh, the beast there, knocked him off and told him what he has to do and told him he has a lot of things to suffer for the be benefit of others. How we might put that in the United States. He basically says, what do you want me to do? Where do I go? Okay, there you go. You have a winner. That's what we have. In the field of honor, this, this gentleman is a winner, big time. Why? Because he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's putting on all of the things that are in Christ Jesus and sound doctrine, and he is, he, and he is focusing on living bread, and that's good. Everything that's germane to what you need to do, which, which has a... Which has a, a a short span here. Not, there, there aren't that many things. Now, I focused on humility here in this ministry so far as to what living bread is, which are germane commandments to humiliation. 
because you put confidence in humiliation. That's what got you started on the, on the salvation road. That's what got you started on the marathon. What got you started on the marathon for victory, springing up into salvation, was that you allowed yourself to be humbled and to confess that you're wrong. Uh, you, you were wrong as a sinner and that, and that you want to please God and go to his son. And, and that makes you a winner. But, but, but the biggest element in all of that is probably humiliation. You were confident in humiliation. Which brings justification. That's how you get your covering. If any man come after me, let him take up his cross. So there you go. If any man loves mo mother, father more than me, he's not worthy of me. Meaning, if, 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 I, if I'm not your number one basic love here, there's no game here. Forget the whole ball game. It doesn't mean you can't love your relatives. It means that you, you got to put me up there. You, you gotta, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to really prioritize me. And, 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 and on top of that, that prioritization is equal to allowing humiliation and putting on a humble mind. If you do that, then we have a winner on our hands. That's, it's very simple. I say this over and over again here because I'm a basics Bible teacher. I like to hammer home basics. It doesn't mean I don't get into prophecy or something or whatever, or even healing. We, we talked about healings here the other day. Uh, and we, we, got more, we have a little more healing scripture uh, analysis to get into and, and to expose, but not right now. At this point, most of the time I focus on James, who says, it says if you're not well, go to the elders and be prayed for. Do you need a book from a Christian bookstore from a guy who's got $400 million in the bank? Do you need that book that he, that he just told you? No, you don't. You do simply what James said to do. Go to the church and have people pray over you. That's it. You can be a Bible teacher and need the, uh, people to pray over you. Okay? Now we have called, not called, of course, it, it called an apostle. Now, the, the, and also called to be a saint. So he's called to be a saint, and the Romans are called to be a saint, right? That means that you now have a path whereby that you can please God and, and hunger and thirst after righteousness and purity, and you can find yourself a winner. You can find yourself being a saint. Because a saint is not someone who, who reaches some sort of holiness, what, uh, which, which is taught around the corner over here. That, that's called... Wrong answer. A saint is someone who's converted, who has a decent uh, application of their life to please the Lord. That, that, that's all it is. I have lots of movies where they say that, you know, oh, I'm not a saint, or all this kind of stuff. That This is when Hollywood went down the toilet. It doesn't mean that every movie Hollywood made is, is in the toilet. It just means that a lot of movies they did are just garbage. You know, it's, it's horrible. Trying to justify uh, saying that, that the Catholicism is okay. There's no problem. There's no problem you calling a man father who's wearing all black. And a lot of people think that I'm some, some sort of individual who, who hates Catholicism uh, pertaining to the people in, the, in, in their... No, that, that's nonsense. One of my best friends in college for years was, was a Catholic. I don't have nothing against Catholics per se. I just have, I, 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 I believe the number one commandment is very important. <laughs> and have no other God besides me. Okay, you got a problem with that? Then we, we can't have fellowship. And one of the Catholics I was hanging out with in college, he told me he was going to be reformed or being reformed or something. And I said, do you worship Mary? He said, no. But do you hang around people who worship Mary? Then he got quiet because he knows he hangs around people who worship Mary. He knows that. In other words, he's, he's kind of addicted to that environment, kind of. He's uh, accustomed, you know, and it's the wrong environment. It's not just wrong on one level. It's, it's wrong on a, on a hundred. So you're called to an office of, of an, to be a saint and, and a servant, 
but not not necessarily of course to be an apostle or a leader such as Paul. And, and of course all of you, be you Roman or Paul, leader or minion, you're all called to be a servant and to have Jesus Christ your master and Lord. Now you've made him your savior, so that's good. But to put on a servant mind is something, it's a process. Now let's continue. So the guide, by the guidance and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can yield to this posture, which the Romans have done and Paul have done. Okay? They've knelt before the Lord, they went to, to, be get, to get baptized, and they were lowered into the water, and that lowering is a sign of death to the world, to pleasures of the world, to... To, and I don't mean all pleasures of the world. What I mean is that you, you're dead to everything that's wrong, and you, you're, going to, you're going to apply yourself to those commandments and those teachings. That, that's all you're going to do. I, I just got started on Proverbs, and it basically says the same thing but different words. It always comes back to commands again. Everything is commands. And, and to love the Lord your God is the big command. And if you love the Lord your God, you're going to pay attention to the other commands. If you love the Lord your God and love your neighbor, you're, you're not going to commit adultery with your neighbor's wife. Is that hard to figure out? No. That's why Paul said we establish the law. I establish the law here. I'm not under the law, but I establish it. Bible teachers who are Protestants are supposed to establish the law. That's what we do here but I'm not under the law. Let's move on. So yielding to the will of the master is what Paul has already done. He's obviously a true servant, you might say. Uh, I don't, he's an Israelite, and that means that he is a person who has subjected himself to the commands of the Lord. I'll be right back, Maranatha.